we are in the loft and this is one of the light fittings from the top and there's this little couch here and there's one on each side, they're just springs and if you pick both of them up you can push the fitting down I will try to do this one handed Ooh. right there we are you see the whole fitting will actually just push through a little bit and the point of that I will show you now you can see this thing hanging out of the ceiling and it basically means you can grab hold of the barrel of it properly with your hand and unscrew the end um, normally these things will unscrew pretty easily um, they climb up here you should just be able to turn like this and it should just come off and this one doesn't <laughs> As you can see, this one probably does. Yeah. But um, if it doesn't, then it's probably because Miller or whoever have put plaster in, in the um, the couches on it and it just won't unscrew. So you need to be able to gravel to do that. So that's the point of going in the loft and pushing the thing through. And then when, you've, when you're done, you just push it back again. That's it. These are the standard bulbs that come with, well, standard in inverted commas, the ones that come with the, the house. So that's the TP24s. And these are things from IKEA. Um, and the issue is really that. Well, apart from their slightly different heights, <laughs> the TP24 deep kind of notch in between the electrodes, and that's matched by quite a sticky out point in the middle <coughs> of the fitting, which fits inside the notch. Problem is that the standard standard bulb, like what I hear does doesn't have a deep enough notch for that thing to fit into. So what do you have to do? Get a pair of pliers like this. And try and balance that there. Just balancing my torch. I'll edit this out afterwards probably. That's good enough. So, oops. So all I'm going to do is reach up in there with the pliers, grab hold of that little plastic sticky out bit, and squeeze. I don't know if you saw the bits of it falling away there. That module no longer exists. And now this bulb will fit in there. Um, because they're not um, as long, tall, whatever, as the TP24s, they're a little bit fittier to fit in, but they do fit in, and then start, and switch them on, they work, hooray, and they should have a lifespan of 20 years. The lids themselves should just fit back on. You know, you put them on, you turn them, and they're supposed to just go on. And this one isn't. This one, just turn, it's on, no problem. Um, the problem with this one is it's full of plaster, so uh, you basically need to clean the plaster out. I just use my fingers, but I suppose you could use a toothbrush or whatever. <laughs> Blow the bits out. Because <laughs> um, that's uh, making it too difficult to push and turn at the same time. Um, <laughs> do the 
missing here on these bits. Make sure they're all free. And then hopefully I'll just turn like that. And that's it. So now I've replaced all of them. And they all work and look the same. These do look slightly different from the other ones, but um, I think they look nicer, to be honest. Now I just replaced all of them, even though some of them were still working. So the ones that are still working, you can use to replace any that have uh, gone in your kitchen, even though they don't look very nice. But, you know, who wants dead bulbs in your kitchen? So, switch it off. Here's one of the... Oh, do you know, I don't remember which ones were working and which ones weren't upstairs. But these ones don't need any fiddling. LEDs instead of halogens in your kitchen. Genius. This is the little thing about TP24. Um, they break really easily. And what seems to go wrong with them is, I don't know if you can see it on this video because it looks a bit blurry, but um, Basically, this little LED here has a blemish on it. Um, each one of these blobs is a little LED. And when they burn out, they get a little blemish, and it looks like it's burnt out. So if you take them apart, like this one I've done here, you can see um, each LED has basically two contacts, and the positive contact of one is connected to the negative contact of the next. They're all connected in series. Um, and the power for that comes from this little circuit here. So the output of this little circuit is DC, the input is AC, that's alternating current. That's the thing that comes into your house that all your plugs and lights are supplied by. So the aim of this little circuit is to take the AC and turn it into DC. So there's a few things that this circuit does. One of them is, oh, let's go over to the window so we can see it properly. Right, God, it's really blurry. Anyway, there are these little black things here. I'll wipe the lens and see if that improves things. No, not really. Um, so there are these little black things. Um, I'll probably take a photo of them <laughs> to show you. Uh, but they are current rectifiers, so basically big chunky diodes that don't allow current to run in the opposite direction to what it should. And with a configuration of four of those, you can basically turn AC current into DC current. The problem is that um, AC current doesn't switch immediately from 240 positive to 240 negative, or 220 these days. Um, it's a sinusoidal wave. The cat, even the cat's complaining about these things. And what that means is that instead of that, the, those current rectifiers on their own giving you a smooth DC output, it will give you a lumpy DC output. So there are other things on here, these capacitors and a few resistors that are on there to try and smooth that out. Now, each of these electronic components will have some tolerance associated with, with it. And the way, one of the ways you can get your costs down when you're building them is to buy components with lower tolerances. Now, I haven't looked them up for, for these particular components, but <clears throat> basically, if they have done that, then 
that means that they haven't smoothed out that AC as well as they could have and that could cause this little burnout um, because the current will be too high. Um, the other thing is because these are all in series, uh, the current through each of them is the current required to power all of them, even though the voltage across each of them is only about 5 volts. Um, and that's that's that means that you really do need to flatten out that current nicely because any fluctuation can cause them to burn out. Uh, so the other thing is also is um, because they're in series, the LEDs, it means that if one goes, then the whole thing stops working because there's no um, current running through it because there's a break in the circuit, basically. However, um, it does not stop the at least one of these two um, capacitors from charging and discharging through a resistor, no less, which means it's still using up electricity even though it's broken. So if you've got a broken one, even if you don't have a replacement for it, remove it because it's just wasting electricity otherwise. Um, so yeah, um, they're horrible things because they're badly made and they break and we've found replacements for them from IKEA four pound a piece that should last 20 years and the other videos show you how um, you can replace them.